Our second speaker is Anne Maria, an activist passionate about the intersection of gender-based violence and female health. She has channeled this passion into advocacy that seeks to improve medicine in rural areas, especially for victims of domestic violence. She is speaking today about her experience as an advocate for girls' action in decision-making spaces. Anne Maria. Good afternoon. My name is Anne Maria, and I am here on behalf of Girl Scouts USA, an organization I've been a part of for 13 years. I am honored and excited to speak with you today. Girl Scouts taught me how to work with other people, how to solve problems, and most importantly, how to be a leader. To earn a gold award, which is the highest award a Girl Scout can earn, one must develop a sustainable project that will leave a lasting impact on a specific community. When I began working on my gold award, I decided to focus on medical marginalization and access to healthcare in rural communities. For my project, I led a team of volunteers in designing and programming Scout Blood a software platform that matches rural hospitals with pre-registered blood donors. Today, Scout Blood has been adopted by 24 hospitals and has amassed 11,000 individual donors in rural India. My work with Scout Blood revolves around healthcare disparities in the poorest and most rural regions of our world. But these same disparities are exacerbated within the most vulnerable populations, namely girls and women. According to the United Nations, 81,000 girls and women were killed in 2020, and 58% of these deaths were at the hands of abusive partners or family members. Globally, the effects of domestic violence against girls are most prevalent in low- and middle-income countries. In healthcare specifically, girls and women are most at risk for feeling ignored or dismissed by a doctor due to gender. Victims of gender-based violence are statistically at greater risk of not receiving life-saving care. These realities for rural girls and women troubled me deeply. So I started Allies Against Abuse, a nonprofit dedicated to serving victims of domestic violence. The nonprofit first began by providing supplies to women's shelters in California that were devastated by the pandemic and struggling to support the influx of women and their children. Around this time, a family friend from Uganda told me about a similar situation in his hometown. Village girls and women were experiencing higher abuse rates and could not receive medical treatment. The closest hospitals were filled with COVID-19 patients and did not have the resources or the infrastructure to prioritize or support abuse victims. That's when we at Allies Against Abuse took on the Uganda Project an initiative centered around the intersection of rural healthcare and domestic violence in Namengo, Uganda. We began by speaking to the women of Namengo and listening to their specific needs. After countless interviews with the local women, we identified the root of the problem. Girls and women are often told that their pain is psychosomatic or just in their head. This tactic allows health centers to dismiss their cases and prioritize male patients, leaving girls and women in the community ignored, deprioritized, and mistreated. So Allies Against Abuse partnered with the women of Namengo to design, develop, and implement the construction of a hospital for local girls and women. For three years, we held charity events, applied for corporate grants, and conducted fundraisers. After raising over $30,000, Allies Against Abuse collaborated with the District Council and the Women of Namengo to design and build St. Sebastian's Women's and Children's Hospital. This hospital accommodates up to 100 patients and is the first in its village to offer health care and resources prioritizing local girls and women. Additionally, Allies Against Abuse fully covers treatment expenses for any widow or victim of gender-based violence. My work has largely been inspired by my grandmother and the women in my family back in India who I know have struggled with obtaining basic health care. Today, millions of girls and women around the world cannot access essential, life-saving care due to barriers like transportation, expenses, and oppressive households. Just like any one of us, they too have a right to life. And we must fight for this right until it can be achieved 
regardless of the presence of a man. Today, St. Sebastian's Hospital serves the 15,000 women of Namengo and the Greater Budaka District. Moving forward, Allies Against Abuse is focusing its efforts on constructing the first ever operation room in Namengo. When we visited Uganda two months ago for the ribbon cutting ceremony, we could see firsthand the impact this hospital has had on the village we built it in. But just during my time in Uganda, I noticed a myriad of other pressing concerns. Limited access to female education, financial dependence on male heads, and societal stigma that forces girls and women into unconditional subservience. These issues are not separate and distinct problems that plague our world, but rather interconnected spikes of the same obstacle we must destroy together. When I was in Uganda, I realized that most of us will never know the suffering of these women. But today, we must try and understand. And understanding begins with listening, listening to the voices, stories, and struggles of girls and women from around the world. To our esteemed policymakers, diplomats, and delegates in the audience, the question I want to pose today is this. We talk about many ideal outcomes, such as changing society's stigma around girls and women becoming financially independent. As real as these goals are, it will take generations to change how some communities treat their girls and women. Within a more immediate time frame, what is a material solution that will allow rural girls and women access to the health care, support, and resources necessary to find safety and independence from their abusers? Thank you. Thank you, Anne-Maria.